Good morning, everybody. Welcome in this uh, webinar about uh, autopilot. So we are going today to have uh, four presentations concerning this uh, EU-funded project. So it's uh, innovation action started uh, 1st of January this year, and uh, this innovation action we now hold for three years. So I'm going to I'm first uh, going to introduce myself. I'm Francois Fischer. I'm the coordinator of the project and um, I'm working at uh, Ertico as a senior project manager. Uh, I will introduce the project uh, with a few slides during 10 minutes and then I will hold the floor to three um, project participants. First, uh, Mr. Miodrac Jurika from TNO who will present uh, the magic of Internet of Things for uh, urban driving and more globally for automated driving. Then uh, Mr. Paul from Koning Bruchin uh, from Technolution presenting transport planning through Internet of Things. And finally, uh, Ms. Stella Nicolaou from CERT to present the human factor and the Internet of Things. And uh, we will leave some time, um, I assume 15 minutes, however, we can go beyond 12 o'clock. So we have booked this uh, webinar resources uh, until 12.30. And uh, we will have the opportunity for question and answer from the experts, the three different experts in this project. So I'm going to start uh, immediately. You can, uh, of course, raise questions during uh, the presentation. Uh, however, we will address all questions during the question answer session. So we are not going to uh, stop between uh, two presentations. So that I'm also asking the speakers who are all now connected to go to meeting to be ready to take over when I finish my first presentation and so on. So, and uh, again, thank you very much for attending today and I hope you will get a benefit out of this pre uh, presentation of this project. So the project is named uh, Autopilot. It stands for Automated Driving Progress by the Internet of Things. Uh, you will see in a later slide, this is one innovation action out of uh, many other uh, innovation action. So as the title of the project uh, says, uh, the goal is to use the IoT, Internet of Things technology, to move uh, automated driving towards a new dimension. Uh, in other words, uh, in autopilot, we would like to enhance driving environment perception with uh, the creation of many IoT-enabled sensors. We will integrate uh, IoT platform the vehicles to make cars uh, IoT object and also cars able to manage uh, many IoT object and also use cloud and IoT platform to share this uh, IoT sensor data from thousands of sensors, and also to create new mobility services with fully automated uh, vehicles. First, a, a very uh, high-level presentation of what we uh, understand in the project about IoT and how we want to use it. The goal is, of IoT is to uh, make a real devices which is connected to become a virtual device in cloud platform, for instance, either on the cloud uh, services or platforms in the vehicle, so a specific IoT platform in the vehicle. So the goal of a virtual device will be to uh, deliver data 
but without using uh, the usual, what we say, silo communication, meaning that, of course, cooperative ITS allow to connect different kind of uh, mobility relevant object with vehicle or with uh, road infrastructure. But what we like to do with IoT is to realize uh, the connectivity without uh, paying specific attention to the mean of communication. So that uh, the IoT is creating a layer between communication and application, and this IoT layer is then responsible to manage these uh, real devices and the transformation of real devices in virtual devices. We see on the left side different uh, actions that uh, IoT is realizing to manage objects, so the representation, identification, discovery of object, security, device management, analytics, semantics. And one of the uh, advantage of IoT is about standardization. So the goal is to develop a standard framework for uh, developing this kind of middle layer between uh, application and communication. Uh, more will be explained in particular by uh, the next speaker, Yodaraj, about uh, Internet of Things. The concept of the project is to uh, use the Internet of Things to uh, connect, but I say the connection is, uh, the connectivity is using usual existing means of communication, but to transform this object, this real object, in virtual object delivering data and being accessible by uh, many different heterogeneous platforms, named IoT platform. So this IoT platform will have the capacity to access uh, the data uh, transmitted by these different objects. So the objects are kind of sensors. For instance, pedestrian could send uh, permanently its position and some information about him if it's an uh, edge person and so on. And this uh, virtual object will be accessible by uh, vehicles over this uh, IoT platform or also using internal vehicle IoT platform. This uh, information from uh, all these objects, so IoT objects, are expected to improve automated driving. So there are two uh, kind of application uh, targeting uh, the use of this object data. Application uh, which are mainly in the vehicle to improve automated driving and then also application in the cloud to use uh, automated driving vehicle. The project has targeted uh, for a uh, type of driving modes, urban driving, highway pilot, so automated driving on highway, platooning, uh, not dedicated to truck, but this time for uh, cars, and automated valet parking. Uh, on top of this driving mode, so these driving modes are, of course, uh, intending to make use of this uh, additional data provided by IoT sensors to improve uh, the automated driving function. So more precisely, the dynamic driving task. First of all, we intend in the project to develop specific driving services, also using IoT and uh, IoT-enabled uh, automated driving uh, vehicles, like, for instance, city chauffeur services for tourism, so that tourism can jump in the automated uh, driving cars and visit cities or historical uh, location. Um, driverless car rebalancing is also a kind of uh, specific automated driving service uh, to create, uh, for instance, platoon of cars to uh, move the car back to some location because usually when 
you offer mobility services uh, vehicle are going from A to B, but uh, very rarely from B to A, etc. So we have different kind of services. Uh, also, automated driving route optimization, real-time car sharing, and so on. These are the service we intend to develop on top of uh, automated driving vehicle. The automated driving vehicle and uh, the service will be deployed on six uh, pilot sites, uh, five pilot sites in uh, Europe, so Tampere in Finland, uh, Livorno, Italy, Brainport, um, actually Endoven in Netherlands, Versailles in France, and Vigo in Spain. And additionally, the project is also banned with uh, Korean project, so we will have a pilot site in Korea. So you see also the different type of driving mode used on the different uh, pilot sites. Uh, we have different kind of impact and uh, associated KPIs. First of all, one impact is to create new IoT device for mobility and for automotive. And there we intend to create more than 1,000 uh, new IoT device implemented on more than 20 cars. We also intend to improve automated driving with IoT by streaming uh, a lot of additional data compared to uh, existing uh, technology like cooperative uh, ITS, for instance, and we also intend to contribute to IoT standardization. You know that IoT standardization is a, a kind of ongoing activity and we will uh, certainly feed uh, the standardization uh, arena with a specific uh, topic related to uh, automotive and mobility. So the project is one of the five large-scale pilot uh, project or innovation action on IoT funded by the European Commission. So it's actually the pilot five, autonomous vehicle and connected environment. The innovation action is uh, lasting for three years, so from January this year till uh, end of 2019. I'm the coordinator. We have currently 45 beneficiaries, not 44, one more. Uh, a budget of 25 million euro with a contribution of 20 million euro. The relevant uh, unit in the Commission is DG Connect Unit E4, which is uh, responsible for Internet of Things, and the uh, uh, unit H2 and A1, so smart mobility and robotic and artificial intelligence. Additionally, two um, Support action has been launched by the same unit named Create IoT and U for IoT. These two uh, actions are supporting the five uh, large scale pilots, and there are different also uh, areas where IoT is currently uh, discussed, uh, like uh, the Alliance for Internet of Things Innovation which is a, an association recently created where this project will also be uh, presented and discussed. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm now holding uh, to uh, my colleague, Miodrac. Uh, so Miodrac, you can uh, go on and ask me to change slides. Hmm? Okay. I was I was I was muted by organizer. Anyway, okay. small thing. Let's go on. Thank you, Francois, for introduction. So uh, what I'm going to talk about is about the use of Internet Things uh, for automated driving. I, uh, I work for TNO. TNO is the Dutch Research uh, Institute and the TNO is the leading partner for the Brainport uh, pilot site, which is located at Helmond Eindhoven area. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? So I would like to start about what is Internet of Things. Uh, a lot of people use it as uh, as hype. So I decided let's go to Wikipedia. I take the, the commonly accepted uh, definition. So Internet of Things is a network of physical objects 
devices, vehicles, buildings, all the other items which are embedded with electronics, software and sensors, and network connectivity, so they are able to collect and exchange data with it with uh, with others. So effectively, IoT enables integration of the physical world into computer-based systems. We do it with the reason of improving control of the processes and therefore efficiency, accuracy, and therefore economic benefit. And the last point I would like to make on this slide is uh, uh, the terms IoT and M2M are frequently used as synonyms, uh, but they're not really synonyms. IoT is about connected objects and their digital representations, while machine to machine, M2M, is about communication between machines with no or very little human intervention. May I have the next slide, please? So, what is happening regarding the, the, the use collection and use of data for the control processes is that we have developments per domain or we have different verticals. For example, in automotive, we have a, a vertical where the parties deploy their own sensors, they arrange their communication networks, they organize service platform, and they have their own applications at the top. And in other domains, we see exactly the same things. But that, that leads basically to, to vendor lock-ins, uh, proprietary solutions, and effectively migrating solutions to some other environment requires adjustments, read, time, and money. Uh, next slide, please. So. The, the goal of IoT as an enabling platform is to provide one general purpose platform where the sensor data can be sent to via a, a communication networks, which can be basically anything. A lot of people are thinking about using uh, 3G, 4G, and hopefully 5G uh, in the near future. And then all the data from different domains is coming to the same IoT platform. And on top of the IoT platform, we see that the different domains, they have their own domain-specific applications because it takes a lot of expertise, you know, to understand what is really needed for a particular domain, which is basically collecting the data from the IoT platform. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? Good. So, IoT platform is about the collecting place for data coming from different sources via different networks. What's happening is uh, there is a, a lot of heterogeneity about what that IoT platform or that collection place for data is going to be. Uh, there is a lot of different initiatives uh, there. So basically at some point, uh, European Commission uh, have seen that development, has seen that heterogeneity. And then they have stimulated organization of the relevant parties working on IoT into Alliance for Internet of Things Innovation, which is basically there to try to find the common ground between all the different uh, IoT initiatives. And what is relevant in our context, one of the work groups is work group nine, is about smart mobility. It's about IoT solutions for uh, for mobility, so that will include uh, multimodal mobility, so different ways to co to connect, uh, but also the different transportation uh, uh, modes, uh, traffic management, uh, dynamic road infrastructure, uh, road tolling, and so on. So AIoT is is now taking the lead in trying to coordinate and and start converging process regarding IoT activities in this field. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? So, so far, what we had is we can see this 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 figure, the number of blocks. We we see there is a clear separation on the left hand side. We have what I call here IoT stack. So a lot of different devices which are used for IoT, and on the right hand side there is what is called autonomous driving stack where the requirements are different. Uh, uh, my colleagues from TNO is basically telling me, okay, uh, these things regarding automotive applications, that's safety critical, it's time critical, and it's a whole different kettle of fish, as they would say. But uh, where we go with improvements in networks that uh, will introduce 
reduce decreased latency, uh, improved uh, reliability of the data transport, and also with IoT as the platform, we will see basically now the green blocks on the left-hand side, IoT platform, and on the right-hand side, what I call here autonomous driving platform. The goal is to merge those two so they were able to exchange the data. May I have the next slide, please? And the goal of it is now, now it's a bigger picture. So uh, what we have here with, uh, with car, in the center, we see here a car zone. Car zone is basically the car reading its own sensors and collecting the data for its own sensors and therefore having a picture about what is going on with itself. And then with the introduction of the uh, cooperative driving, then we have the next circle, which we call here cooperation zone, where the vehicle is exchanging the data with other vehicles in its vicinity, but also some of the traffic and road infrastructure. So think about traffic lights, uh, roadside units along the road, uh, you know, smart roads in general, whatever that may be. And therefore the world that the, the, the car has, the, the number of information, who is around me and what is going on is bigger. But it's still limited by the, by the range or the communication technology which is used. And then we get to the next, what is called here in blue, uh, smart city zone. Uh, the, when we have IoT, and the, the vehicle can also exchange data with the smart city zone, you can uh, imagine that the car will get, for example, information on uh, roadworks, uh, available parking spaces on the street or in the parking garages, uh, the busyness on the streets, because the smart city zone will include IoT platform there, therefore the data about what is going on in the city. So yet the, the world of the car becomes bigger. It can get more information. It can create even better world model about what is going around uh, the, the, the vehicle and looking at what the vehicle wants to do. And finally, there is the, the, this red block, which is basically other IoT systems, meaning the world is even bigger than that. So ultimately the application running in the vehicle will have by adding IoT, the application will have many more sources of data and therefore can make even better and more specific world model, which will fit into its, let's say, purposes. May I have the next slide, please? I think this is uh, the, the general slide. Uh, Francois mentioned it already. This is about European large-scale pilot, autopilot. So I, I think we should uh, skip this one. What is relevant is a large number of partners. This is the autopilot, what we have chosen as the IoT architecture functional view. Uh, we can look at it at the very bottom there, devices, what they are called here, autopilot things. So think about vehicles, think about vulnerable road users uh, with their own smartphones that will send the data and therefore they are also IoT data sources of uh, buses, buildings, traffic lights and so on. On the left hand side at the bottom there are external services, other sources of data think about uh, high definition roadmaps, uh, weather services, uh, uh, city hall departments that are busy with uh, uh, roadworks and so on. On top of this, let's say bottom layer devices and sources of data, effectively sensors, we have networking layer. And networking layer is basically general purpose networks. So think about 4G in the future, 5G, but also other networks like ITSG5, which is uh, widely, let's say, used in, in, in automotive domain. And on top of this, um, in autopilot, we have what we call uh, IoT layer, which is basically containing one M2M as IoT platform. But we add also more things to it. Uh, for example, uh, context management uh, by using fireware, but also semantics, analytics, uh, security, and so on. 
And finally, on the very top, we have application layer, which are really autopilot dedicated applications, referring basically to the four use cases Francois mentioned. So uh, highway pilot, automated valley parking, uh, platooning, and urban driving. May I have the next slide, please? This is just an example how it is going to work. So this is urban driving example. So at the in, if you look at the figure, at the bottom of the figure, we have sensors. And those are, for example, we have a connected car, we have vulnerable road users. In this case, they are smartphones sending their location constantly to the IoT platform. Uh, road cameras, traffic lights, other traffic sensors that are, for example, in the, in the, in the asphalt itself. And they all send the data through general purpose networks or, or ITFG5, for example, through the little blue lines and they send them to the I IoT open platform. And on top of the platform, we have third party services and urban driving services, which are applications, and they are subscribed to the new data. So every time the new data is coming from the sensors, so from the bottom part, it come, when the new data comes to the IoT platform, IoT platform informs the applications, services, that the new data is available, it can send them the data, and the data is then processed. Can I have the next slide, please? And this is just an example about uh, what are we going to implement in the brain port in the scope of the autopilot. And just a quick explanation, and that this is basically the last slide I have. At the very bottom, we have vehicles, and the vehicles will have, let's say, two logical components. One will be related to autonomous driving itself, and the other one would be IoT node, which will basically uh, ex uh, read the vehicle sensors and send them on to the IoT platform. Uh, we have two lines here coming from the cars. There is a green line, which is basically uh, 4G con con connectivity, and we have a blue line, which is ITSG5, which will handle time-critical data. Uh, via the, the time critical data, we will do typical uh, uh, ITFG5, so exchanging of time critical data. And in the near future, when LTE V2X becomes available, we will introduce LTE V2X here as well. But for non -time, crit non time critical data, we will go through green lines, through 4G, therefore, towards the E node B. And at the E node B, we will have a choice whether to uh, send it to the mobile edge computing nodes, for example, for uh, local data should be kept local. This is our philosophy. So to process it near the car or to send it towards uh, uh, one M2M uh, platform, which is basically on the uh, left center corner, which says uh, IoT one M2M platform. Uh, there will be other platforms as well. If you look at the, at the higher part, there is a Sensinov IoT platform and there is a Huawei uh, IoT platform. In the real life, there will not be just single IoT platform which will hold all the data. We will effectively have federation of IoT platforms that will exchange data with each other. And this is also what we will have in the brain part. Um, so, this is it. I, I went relatively quickly through uh, all of the slides, but I expect if there are questions, they will come at the end of the session. So thank you for attention. Thank you very much, Judraj. Uh, I'm now launching a uh, user presentation from... Uh, leave me a minute, I also to unmute. Uh, Paul, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may I ask you because you have 15 slides to uh, try to get it in 10 minutes, please. No problem. No. Yeah. Um, Paul van Konnersen, Technolution. Uh, I think it's in the name of the company, Techno Technology Solutions. So, looking at the IoT, we participate in in the autopilot project. Uh, happy to participate in the autopilot project. But also having the role, okay, suppose all the beautiful stuff uh, my judge talked about is there, is in place. What about the service layer? How can we how can we bring IT to solutions? Um, next slide, please. 
Um, and from that perspective, I have still a lot of questions. Um, um, because in the end, we have to turn all this beautiful technology into solutions, the service layer. And when you look at Internet of Things, we talk a lot about the word things, the objects, um, uh, all the elements we are using. And, and, and there I do have a, a, a good understanding. And not in all depth, of course, because, because there is a lot of technology, a lot of things you have to understand. But they do have an understanding. Um, um, but where I have a difficulty with is if we make everything connected and everything taught and all the things, all the objects, they communicate to it. To, to each other. Um, uh, what is then the relation with this human intervention? Eh? That was in the definition of, of uh, we saw um, in, in, in the previous uh, presentation, IoT is about connected objects and their digital representation, eh? so ready for human intervention. What is the relationship with humans? And then not so much from a perspective of human factors, uh, I'll, I'll leave that complexity to Stella, but much more to, 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 to the solutions that will help us on the street, help us to 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 get a, 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 to improve road safety, uh, better quality of life, all these these, these more community policy driven aspects. So I do have still an issue with the word things. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and and there was uh, there was some very nice articles. Uh, this is, is 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 some faces from an article in the Guardian, with a very clear statement. Well, perhaps you should forget about things when we talk about the Internet of Things. And of course, hey, IT it is it is it is has its strength. Uh, it's a, a, a technology push. It's technology driven, perhaps even. Uh, but things are not something that 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 we are attracted to so much. Things are just there. They are there. They are ready to use. If there is a hammer, it, it, it is somewhere in my house. When I find it, I can pick it up and I can use it and put it away again. That is how we we work with things. Uh, and in the world of the digitalization, things too often ask attention from us. They 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 are brought to us via an app on a smartphone or on a smartwatch. And and but if we have automated vehicles. Okay, the vehicle is completely automated. I can just sit and relax. But the vehicle drives into a city. There are children playing. Should the children have all sort of smartwatches to be able to interact with the with the with the auto automated vehicle? What are things and, and 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 perhaps step over things and how can we use the IoT to 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 bring it into an internet of people, to 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 an internet that empowers people in their behavior on the street and behavior that we can enhance so we come to better uh, the performances to, together. And again, I leave the, the human factors complexity to, to Stella, but let's, let's, let's have a look at the, what does it mean for solutions? Next slide, please. Um, and then when we talk about meaningful and uh, technology that fulfills uh, connected experiences, then, then we require a set of 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 of, of design principles, a set of things that we should we should we should think of when we start to design solutions. And I, I th these are just some first ideas. We are now uh, while busy with the architecture in, in the autopilot, also thinking of okay, what are the are the additional rules we need to take to, to 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 take into mind when we bring things to the streets, and not only to the motorway, not only to the trunk roads, but also to the little street, the the, the charming streets. Uh, and, and some first ideas are having, we look at from a, perhaps from a human society perspective, we have to unfreeze the frozen. Uh, and from a technology a solution provider's perspective, we have to start to think about sharing intentions and experience, because that's what people do. Uh, they share intentions and experience, sometimes in a very nice way, sometimes in a less nice way, but that's what they do. And we have to respect human nature in our solutions. So if I perhaps may touch upon those uh, step by step, and starting with unfreeze the frozen. Next slide, please. I think a very good example is the world of traffic light controllers. We have traffic light controllers. It's one of the one of the oldest uh, instruments we have for traffic ma uh, management. It's a very good instrument for traffic management. But it has found its way into rules and regulation, it has been even embedded into law, uh, not only in the Netherlands, the example, but in most countries. So the whole technology has been fixed. It should be like this and it shall be like this. When we talk about the Internet of Things, where we connect everything, we step into the world of dynamics. 
So we leave the world of stability and predictability and we step into the world and this was, was, was the, the, I always like the picture of Edward Tuttle, which, which is a very nice redesign of a traffic light. Uh, uh, where you more and more show, look, this is how far we are with the green time and this is how far you still have and, and, and perhaps you now should pay attention because we are nearly there and we'll step into the, uh, to the ember phase. A design that starts to communicate and I think when we talk about the, int the internet of, of, of things in the middle, it's much more the right hand side than the left hand side. So we, we, we should tune the whole traffic light control world into to the world of, of internet of things. So if you would like to, to, to perhaps give priority, then immediately, and this happened literally last Monday, one guy steps up, say, look, we're not allowed, given the rules and regulations, to give priority to a specific group of, 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 of road users. But overall, it might be very beneficial to give priority to a group of road users, to give priority to cyclists and, and, and buses when you would like to have, 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 have a CO2 neutral city, to give priorities to automated vehicles if you would like to stimulate uh, autonomous uh, driving. So it, 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 it will be interesting. So we have to unfreeze everything that has been frozen over the last decades. That's design rule one. Next slide, please. Um, sharing intentions and experience, and we can immediately step to the to the next slide. Um, again, we see we, we, we see a lot of things that are already there when we talk about 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 how do we like to perceive your city. We make we draft policy plans, and we do that every five years, and then people can have some some evening, evenings they can share their ideas. We have a policy plan, and that's it. I think the Internet of Things now gives us the opportunity to share the intentions and experience, how do we as citizens would like to see our city? And what does CO2 neutral means for us, for us as citizens, for the visitors? Just share it. Um, the, the same when we are in the, in, the, in the traffic. I am heading for a traffic light, but what is my direction? I mean, a traffic uh, and, and a controlled intersections, there are many, many directions. So if I would like to to, 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 to have some kind of additional green or, or yes or no, or I would like to understand what is the time to green for me, I should be able to connect it to my direction and perhaps I should uh, share my direction, my intentions with the traffic light controller. And the same for loading and unloading uh, in, in, in the, the little, uh, little streets. At this very moment, I need this place to uh, uh, unload my, my cargo for the shops or perhaps I would residents in the streets would like to say look at this very moment given the sun given that the kids are, are, are in the house we would like to use the street as a residential area instead of uh, uh, as a trunk road and we should be able to share experiences we see that in society to, today eh, we're using Twitter Facebook all the other sorts not always in a very constructive manner but people want to have their influence on a day-to-day -day basis and not on an every five days every five years or four years basis. So given the technology, how can we get the intentions and experience out of it and share with them ourselves so overall we come to a better performance? That's the second design rule. Next slide, please. A third one, and again, these are just some first ideas, is that we have to respect human nature. Human nature in, in the sense of, oh, just let me, uh, oh, I made up my mind, no things, I all, already have something. Uh, perhaps you can touch upon those uh, three ones. The next slide, please. There was these beautiful ideas of, of and, and, and they are beautiful ideas of an, of, of an, of an, of an pedestrian, uh, perhaps even an, an, an elderly uh, 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 pedestrian approaches a traffic light, he's recognized, he or she is recognized and the light goes green. Uh, and, and, and I don't mind how we communicate because then, I mean, that's, that's the difficulty of, of human factors, how we communicate it, uh, with, with each other, but the light goes green. And at the same moment, the pedestrian says, no, 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 I will take another direction because I just would like to visit this shop. Human beings are the ones that change their mind, that change their, their plans. So there is a success factor in IoT that besides all the connections and, and, and all the data we can exchange, we should also be able to handle uh, the, the intentions and the change in intentions. Yes, I intended to cross the street, but at the last moment I decided to turn to the right because I would like to, because I see a shop. I would like to, to visit. How to deal with these spontaneous decisions? The other one is the, oh, just let me. 
um, uh, let me be with me myself and I, I don't want to interact. People are in moments that they don't want to interact. We also should be open that people are connected and disconnect them from the Internet of Things at the same moment and don't get advices the moment they don't want to get advices. And the third one is the other slide. Is the no thanks, I already have a thing. I already have a car. I love my car. I don't need uh, an autonomous car. There are people that, that, that will be the trendsetters. They will step into the, the, the automated vehicle day one. The other ones will, will, will they are still fond of their, their, their old cars. And this picture always attracts me because I don't think we, we can afford ourselves this kind of infrastructure that we start to separate the different groups. I don't think we can afford it on a motorway really not into the cities and I don't think we would like to separate things. We don't like to have this separated society. So IoT by definition should work in an hybrid world where people are not connected, where people disconnect themselves from the sense, oh, just just, just let me, or where people <coughs> change their minds, change their, their plan. And this is human nature we should respect. Next slide, please. So, Given the whole framework um, that, 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 that just was presented by Miodrak, uh, the beautiful framework, we start to understand, okay, if we get this, this in place, we have, have some wonderful tools in our hands and we can make things connected. If we bring it to, 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 to the humans, if we turn this Internet of Things into the Internet of People, we need design rules. Design rules that, 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 that on the one hand say, okay, we have to change the rules and regulation because we step into a new world. So we cannot say it is not allowed. It was not allowed by then, but now we have new tools, new opportunities. It might be allowed right here and now. It might be even good to allow it. And we need to take into account everything that is that is that is human. Humans share their intentions. They look at each other when the, 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 they try to find eye contact with each other. Uh, but they can just change that intention. They can change their, their, their plans. These are the things we should we should embed into the solutions we, we design. So I still have a lot of questions. I only have made um, uh, the first step into okay, what should be the design rules? But in the end, given the design rules we have, we should start to bring them in the first cut, bring them in into the to, to the pilot side. We are together with Tino in the brainport pilot side. And I think these are the kind of solutions we should work to on this pilot side. Next slide, please. Ah, sorry, I, uh, can, can you stop with the next slide, please? Uh, I think we you have reached the end of the presentation, uh, Paul, sorry. Yeah, no, but the next slide is the end of the presentation. So the whole message is, uh, from my side, is that in the end, whatever thing of technology is good, we should humanize the technology. And that is from my side. Thank you very much, Paul. I'm now uh, directly handing over to uh, Stella. One minute. Uh, okay. Please, Stella. Yes, okay. Uh, hello from me as well. I'm Stella Nicolaou from CERT, from the Hellenic Institute of Transport. Uh, we are working on uh, uh, several areas in autopilot, one of them on human factors, especially for uh, VRQ protection, collaborative perception, as we mentioned. So I will just introduce some human factors generally in automated driving, but it is already a big issue for the last two years, and then we can try to focus how this can be handled also under the IoT and how can IoT support it. Next slide. Slide, please. Yes, you have to press. Okay. Uh, regarding safety, uh, some figures uh, coming from uh, from the literature. Uh, what is the goal of, of if if we have uh, let's say safety as the goal? We human factors people have this as priority. Uh, firstly, we need to understand and add the system's vigilance, the driver vigilance, instead of bypassing, instead of uh, uh, hanging only on the on the vehicle and on the sensors, and uh, com comprehensive hazard warnings uh, and control assistance. So we need to be supportive to the driver, not uh, always bypassing him. 
and uh, in case that the driver is out of the loop the problem is that we have to handle everything from the system and this is ending us to several unpredictable scenarios as the you have heard uh, for several times in the last two years and of course there are several ethical issues that we need to consider and this is causing a lot of problems in the acceptance of the of the technology to the users next slide please So from the market perspective, uh, if you click uh, on, on once more, Francois, we can see on the hype cycle that autonomous vehicles and Internet of Things are in the highest point. Uh, however, automation uh, is something that uh, is indeed in the, in the highest uh, point. Uh, next slide, please. However, next slide. Uh, the user's feedback related to the automated vehicle so that uh, safety is uh, the highest uh, expectation of the users and therefore uh, we need the user acceptance before we reach the deployment. So this uh, have to work together and that's why we are here to, to support it. Next slide, please. So regarding the impact of, of uh, just stop there, okay. No, no, please, one back. Okay. Uh, regarding how to how to calculate the impact of automated driving, you know that we are at the first, let's say, uh, impact assessment in real time, and that's quite kind of, of a hard job. We have two uh, possibilities to do that. Uh, one uh, is based on uh, on estimates uh, of how automation will resolve current human factors. For example, one uh, study came that automated vehicles will uh, be 50% safer uh, from non-automated ones, uh, even with a low market penetration. And the other says that 37 of potential access can be avoided with the adoption of automated driving functions. This is the one, let's say, approach with estimation. And the second is, please, next. Uh, so, uh, estimates based on early experiments. Uh, next, please. So, this is a, a new a recent study from uh, Virginia Tech Transportation Institute, VTTI. Uh, but the crash rate of automated Google cars uh, versus automated vehicles, so a high decrease in crash rate, 36%. And for minor crashes, even higher, 61%, which is, let's say, more concrete, let's say, results from the first uh, approach. However, yes, one more. We have two fatal crashes with Tesla automated vehicle. Actually, I thought it was one in the US and Florida. However, I learned in the ITS Strasbourg that there is a previous one held in China in January, which shows that not always automated driving suggests that it's a safety uh, approach. So we need firstly to design and implement based on the human factors, as very well said Paul before, we need to humanize the, the technology. Yes, next slide please. So what are the human factor challenges? Uh, because we are an innovation action project and our main target is integration, we need, of course, to provide the right integration in the right time and the right way. It's very important that integration is held in the maximum uh, seriousness, I would say, uh, in all aspects considering all the actors and, of course, the users on the hub. Then, of course, the target is that the perception of the situation uh, is uh, happening and that all, uh, all the, let's say, the, the actors are uh, under safe uh, operation and efficient and, of course, and comfortable, but safety, I think, is the maximum we can uh, expect from, from such technologies in order to answer to human uh, expectations. Yes, please. Second slide. And uh, recently going from uh, air track automated driving roadmap, the recent one, the updated one in 2017 that was presented at the ATS Strasbourg Congress, uh, we have some uh, other challenges. Uh, firstly is how to understand the interaction between humans and automated vehicles inside the vehicle and outside, different levels of automation, how to design the safe intuitive interaction of automated vehicles with other road users. This includes also pedestrian cyclists, uh, motorcyclists, even harder. And how to derive interaction design concepts for the automated vehicles in order that both the human driver and other humans in the surrounding traffic sufficiently understand 
the limitations and the capabilities of the vehicle. So these are open issues uh, happening uh, right at the moment, and I think that most of them can be answered by IoT support. So let's move further, please. So going to the vehicle safety, which I think is the target issue, how, how these uh, vehicles can interact with other road users, other participants. Uh, a recent study ends up that vulnerable road users, of course, are more likely to get involved in fatal accidents uh, or accidents with serious injuries because they are not protected. Uh, we can see, of course, that there are some uh, quite a lot of uh, support other systems like the AEB system that can uh, avoid such accidents. However, there are limitations in, the, in case of uh, weather or uh, uh, time conditions like darkness and high speeds. Uh, so it's expected that mass and fast communication between ITS can improve the safety. So it means that we can connect the ITS under an IoT platform in order to improve the safety of all those users. Yes, next slide, please. So what about uh, the IoT like cloud-based applications for detecting VR use? Uh, we have, there is a study that sees that using a smartphone or, or a similar device, a connected device, let's say, uh, we can achieve good localization and latitudinal accuracy. So this means that we can really support many safety applications. And if we can consider that all such applications can be embedded by an IoT platform by combining in-vehicle uh, systems and infrastructure support, we can really next slide please i said the next slide but probably i was lost okay you hear me now okay yes. so what is uh, the the proposition in uh, autopilot is what we call it collaborative perception understanding of, uh, of connection between uh, all the road participants and uh, uh, the the local site uh, this is our first let's say uh, kind of uh, architecture what we are using for the sites in Versailles, the French pilot site, but I think that also other sites are using uh, the same approach. So what, how we achieve that, we are combining uh, wearable uh, systems uh, based on uh, smart glasses, smart gloves, smartphones uh, for connecting pedestrians and cyclists with uh, the cars and the infrastructure under, the, under a new IoT platform that also considers uh, the intentions of, the, of those uh, vulnerable users, as very well Paul said, and we also consider the chains of intentions as well in our, uh, let's say, um, scientific approach uh, on this platform. And we also use an open communication and that we are able to, to fastly uh, transfer the information uh, using the whole, let's say, technology that can be provided through IoT. And next slide, please. And some examples that I can give you at the moment, it's a uh, kind of graphics so for you to understand. Here is an example of a pedestrian, but he's connected through smart glasses, smartphones, smartwatches, and then there is an automated vehicle that in case that there is something wrong with the automated vehicle, then we can communicate also the, uh, the emergency to the pedestrian, or we can only give him the, uh, the possibility to know, to book uh, the automated vehicle or uh, to know the presence of automated vehicles in the area, depending, of course, on the on the uh, on the service at this given moment. So it can be used both for safety and for comfort, information, efficiency of the of the services. And the next example is uh, same example for the cyclists. Uh, here we have an onboard unit as well. And these are going to be uh, deployed uh, for 10 pedestrians and 10 cyclists in Versailles. And I think that also the Livorno pilot site and the Brainboard pilot site have also considered uh, VR use in their uh, understanding of uh, safety and uh, perception of the situation. So that's all from me. Uh, any questions are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a nice uh, afternoon and see you uh, next presentation is in the ITS Congress in uh, Montreal. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.